It's time to hang out with Ken Masters. No, not the Street Fighter 2 one. Hello, I'm on a boat. Yes, I'm somewhere on Southampton Waterworld. To be precise, off of Fawley, and it smells of gas, surprisingly. Or perhaps not surprisingly, because it's an oil refinery, and I'm trying not to fall in. And yes, while well, sailing computer games, you don't have much choice, really, do you? There is that Richard Branson game, Atlantic Challenge, where you have to take your powerboat across the Atlantic, not to be confused with the other balloon-based one. And then there is this game. Back to the studio. This is probably a title you don't remember. It's Sailing. You may have seen it for sale in Mastertronic when it was re-released, but it was also originally released under the name The International Yacht Challenge Game Snappy Title in 1987 by Activision, released on the C64, the Spectrum and the CPC. And for a 1987 game, it cost just £7.99. Sailing is a game of strategy and simulation designed to capture the thrill of competing in top-level yachting competitions. You need all your wits about you as you design your boat to take part in this international challenge. Okay, well, let's start up the game. We're going to start on the C64, which I believe is the original version. And there's different levels you can play on. We're going to start off as Lamb Lubber, even though I've already been out at sea to prove my sea legs. Granted, for the next 12 hours or so when I got back, it still felt like I was at sea. You first select the country you want to represent in the International Yachting Challenge. And then you have to design your boat. Which I know all about designing a boat. Luckily though, I am in fact Tom Howard. So we're calling our boat Barracuda. And of course, it's going to be made of fiberglass because we're not going to have wood here. This is a modern boatyard. I don't know what most of this other stuff does. All of these things here affect the performance of your boat. But the instructions don't give you too much information about what you actually need to do. Your aim is to climb the league table. You start at the bottom and you can race any country up to two places above you. And we're in the sea. And we get dramatic music. Sadly, not the Anedin line music or, or Barracuda by uh, Simon May, which was the song going through my head when I was out on Southampton Water the other day, naturally. So you have to sail between the three points, pretty much like your Royal Yachting Association level one. I passed that one, that's as far as I got. And you have to round the boys and complete the circle circuit uh, ahead of the other boat. The wind is shown on the left hand side there uh, as an arrow. You can't sail directly into the wind, you have to zigzag um, because your, your sails won't catch the wind. We're going to six knots at the moment, but I'm speeding up here as I zigzag my way forward towards that other boy. Um, in fact, this boy's still flashing, so we're still trying to round the first boy. And then there you go, the top boy there is now flashing as well, so we need to get up to there. We've been told where the wind's coming from, and the wind's also shown on the, uh, relative to us on that diagram on the left-hand side. Not unlike a real boat, I'm going to put a picture in here to show you what a real boat looks like. I'm making it sound like I'm some kind of Jack Roll, whereas in fact I've spent two days out working on a, on a boat. So, I can see the... Was it Italy I was racing? I can't remember now. It doesn't matter. I'm still miles behind. It says spinnaker is stowed down the bottom there. Now, if you want to raise the spinnaker, which um, makes you go faster in certain conditions, then you have to press your fire button. Then you can't steer, because what you're going to do is waggle the joystick in order to raise it. I'm not going very fast, I'm doing about five knots, which is frankly slower than we were going out the other day, so... And I'm still way behind that first boat. Of 
forwarded on. We're much closer now, and I've closed in on the other competitor. You're only basically racing after one other boat at any given race. Amstrad CPC. So it's the same as the C64. Select who you want to be, build your boat, and then out onto the ocean waves you go. I'm choosing fiberglass again. Spot the connection to the previous boat. You now have Marty Webb in your head. Marty Webb is in your head, and she's not going away for many days. And now we go onto the open sea again. It's a completely accurate representation of the open sea. 20 foot waves, the manual claims you're facing. Although, this is a bit odd because if you're doing a real sailing race like this in between three points, it, it probably wouldn't be in 20 foot waves because this is the kind of competition you get. We always see in the Solent most weekends in the summer where yachtsmen race between three points to try and get the best times. It's, ha it's hardly the Rio de Island. Look at me, look at me with my yachting terms with my new yachting friends. This looks very attractive on the CPC. And do we have split modes going on here? Is that mode naught at the top? Yes, I think it could be. Because we've got medium resolution text bottom half of the screen. It gets quite confusing when you can't see the other craft. And don't worry if you get a long way behind because chances are you can catch them fairly easily. I'm uh, going quite well. I'm going to really get to catch up with them quickly. The manual also points out the game has been highly condensed to emphasise the ups and downs of sailing. Checking the manual, because I don't actually know th <laughs> much about this stuff, other than how to sail between three points on a, on a dinghy, which I do know how to do. The spinnaker is a parachute-like sail which can be carried downwind on a reach, i.e. when the wind is behind you. So I imagine it hinders you if you're sailing into the wind. Spectrum version. Curious bug on my version of the Spectrum, the only boat name I can put in is Numbers. Pretty much like all those people on Twitter. Um, yeah, all those Twitter accounts, right? Perhaps they're all just people with a bug and they just have to enter all these different numbers in in order to get a username. That's probably it. So we're going to race Argentina. It's a 48k game, so no music on the specy. And it's a bit choppy, and you don't get the flag on of the competing nation on the other craft sail either. The only things you're going to see ever are the other boat and the boys, and that's it. Not even the soon-to-be-demolished Foley power station chimney, which um, is, a, is a landmark along Southampton Water. I'm flying, I'm doing 13 knots now, although there is a 28 knot wind. You do have to hunt the wind, just like in real life. I mean, that's this is such a basic representation of sailing, but the one thing it does get right, and is fairly accurate, is the way you have to get yourself positioned relative to the wind in order to get speed. And as I say, you can never sail directly into the wind, unless you have diesel marine engine, but that's cheating. They won't let you do that in the yachting competitions. Back on the 64, and we approach the third boy, the bottom left-hand side of the triangle. I've said it. I've said it. We're sailing between three points, and I've not even mentioned Felixstowe, Gothenburg, Amsterdam, or a flash of Kate O'Mara's um, bit. I'm on CPC, I'm lowering the spinnaker because it ain't working for me. 
and you have to waggle the joystick frantically in order to do this. And all the time you're doing this, because you're apparently sailing single-handed, you're just adrift, just blowing around. I don't see how you could just not have... Because surely you'd have... I don't know. I don't know. It's an approximation of sailing. Spinnaker is stowed so I can sail again. I am, however, many miles away from the computer's craft. So I'd better get a move on, because I'm going to lose this otherwise. So let's just find that wind. I'm watching my knots. I'm slowing down. I'm trying to find where the wind is. Come on, I need to find the wind. I need to find the wind. Here we go. Ten knots. Right, we can do this. We can get a bit of speed up. There's a 20 knot wind. Each competitor higher up in the league table gets harder and harder to compete against. You can also replicate what I noticed to be one of the, mo one of the most important things on a uh, yacht or boat, that someone makes the skipper cups of tea and brings them to him at the helm. Back on the specky. It, it loses something without the dramatic music. As I just come round that boy and start heading towards the final point. C64 version. I am now ahead. Can I win this? Can I win this? I have won. Victory is yours. I'm now ranked 16th and we're going to do all that again. The course can vary between 5-6 minutes to up to 15 minutes some of the times I've played this, depending on how the wind is blowing. And if you are at sea and you want to keep your drink warm and you want to stop sea water and anything else getting in, you can buy a Chini Vision mug. Look, here's one actually at sea and I can testify it worked brilliantly at keeping my coffee warm and safe for a really long time. Absolutely ideal for seamen everywhere. After version onto the final stretch. And I'm so, trying not to sail into the wind. The wind's coming from the direction I need to be in, so I'm just heading off course slightly and zigzagging just to keep that speed up. There are no other boats around, nothing else to worry about, especially red jets going to the Isle of Wight, leaving a massive wake and stinking of diesel fumes. Are you listening, Red Funnel? Your boats stink. A little bit of Isle of Wight politics for you there. Come on, I can see that boy just floating there. Just need to be a little bit closer. And I'm slowing right down. Uh, where's the computer? He's not too far behind me. Come on, I can do this, but I'm only doing 2.7 knots. Stop going up a bit. Come on, come on, come on. If I just slipped the engine on, they wouldn't notice, would they? Spectre version doing the same thing, just heading towards that finish line. I've just about made it. So, International Yacht Challenge slash sailing, if you bought it on budget by Mastertronic. Well, it's one of a very few sailing games. It's not a genre, but it's particularly well represented on the home micros. This game is very limited. It's very limited indeed. But there's quite a lot of fun here. The magazine reviews were mixed, but this is an arcade thrills. This is about working out where the wind is reacting to it and trying to beat one competitor 
of increasing skill levels. Just like real sailing, you have to find the wind. You have to work out your position relative to the wind and the position of the competitor and where you need to be. If you're sailing into the wind, you need to zigzag. If you're sailing away from the wind, you've got you can maybe get lots of speed up, and you can employ your spinnaker downwind to get more speed as well. The C64 version is leagues above the Spectrum and the Amstrad version. It's the original and it's very, very polished, fast, and it looks good. The Amstrad version is a pretty good go, but it's a little bit slower, and the Spectrum version isn't polished at all, really. It lacks that music, and the graphics aren't particularly good, although the limitations of that machine overall. In all, I think it's a game worth having a look at, although you're going to have to understand a little bit first about how a boat reacts to the wind. And to be honest, it's just interesting because it's one of the few sailing games around.